Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today I will show you guys 15 hidden settings that you will find on your iPhone running iOS 14. These are settings that are buried and hidden within the iOS 14 settings app, but are actually very useful and I believe every iPhone user should know about them. Now, before we get into those settings, I just want to ask you guys for a favor. Please make sure you leave a like on this video as it really does help out a lot on my channel. The first setting we're talking about can be found on your profile on the settings app. So you go to the top of the settings app, tap on the profile and then go under password and security. Here you will find apps using Apple ID. Now this is a hidden setting that will display all the different apps that are using your Apple ID. You can see the list of the apps right here and by tapping on one of them, you can see more details. So you will see basically the email that this app is using and of course, where it forwards to and you will see also the privacy policy and terms and conditions of this app and you can ask the app to stop using Apple ID from here. Now, if you go back, you can also just remove any of these apps simply by tapping the edit button and just remove any of these apps from using your Apple ID. The next setting we're talking about can be found under the accessibility setting. So if you go here and scroll all the way down, you will find a section that says subtitles and captioning going here, you will find style. Now everywhere on your iOS, when you see the default player and have captioning or subtitles on them, then you will be able to actually customize how they look from here. So you see, you have transparent background, large text, classic, and outline text. These are like the preloaded styles that will come with iOS 14, but you can create your own style by going here. You can change like the background. You can change anything you want. So you can set here the background for the subtitles. You can see how that looks. And of course, tapping there, you will be able to go to a full screen mode and see how these subtitles will look. Now, once you have created that style, it will show up here. And then of course you can select it anytime you want. A really important thing on your iPhone is of course having more free storage. Now free storage goes away really quickly on your iPhone. And one really important setting that you should take a look at is found under the Safari section. So if you go to Safari and scroll all the way down, here's a section that says advanced and here's website data. Now, if you go here, it will show you a list of all the websites and the data that they have stored on your device. So you can see right here how much data each of the websites have stored on your device. On your iphone and you can of course go ahead and delete any one of them from here just swipe like that and delete those data to free up space on your device and if you want you can also just remove all the website data or just tap the edit button right there to remove any one individually under the safari settings there is also another very cool setting it's called open links if you go here you will find two options in a new tab or in a background so basically if you choose in a new tab you open one of the links and just tap here it will open it right away it will take you to that link but if you choose in the background then when you're browsing something so let's say we're here on the apple website i want to open this link then i will get this new option tap right there and as you can see it goes here it opens the link actually but it opens it in the background so I don't have to move from here while I'm browsing something and I can go back to that tab whenever I need to. Next up is a setting found under the password section on the settings app. What you do here is go ahead and tap on security recommendations and make sure you enable this button right here. It's called detect compromised passwords. Now what this does, it automatically detects if you're using any compromised passcodes and it will show you right here all the issues and of course notify you to change that passcode. Now, when it comes to iPhone storage, you can find that section right here under the general. You go to iPhone storage and you will have a list of all the apps and of course, everything that is taking up space on your device. But lower here, you can also find a section that says on my iPhone. If you go here, then you will find all the different things that you have downloaded through the files app 
and are saved locally on your iPhone. It shows you here how much data they're using on your device. And if you tap on my iPhone here, then you will show a full list of the files and their size. And also it gives you the option to actually delete any one of them from here. Even if you have different folders there, it will also show you folders and you can again go ahead and see all the files on those folders and of course also delete them. On the mail app, you have swipe gestures, like swipe gestures to delete maybe an email or flag it or whatever you want. But if you go to settings and you go to mail settings, then you will find swipe options. Going here, you have swipe left, swipe right. Going here, you will be able to actually change what these swipes do. So you can choose the flag or move message or just remove it completely. And then you have swipe right, you can mark as read, move message or just archive it from here. So any way you wanna customize these, any way you think they fit better for you, you can do that from here. Now, another really, really important setting that can be found under the mail app is found lower here blocked senders options now this one is very useful now when you block an email usually it will just leave those emails in the inbox if you have this one selected they will be in the inbox even though that sender is actually blocked and that's really nonsense but that's how it works now moving here and tapping move to trash will automatically move any email that you get from blocked senders directly to the trash folder and of course you will have also an option here to mark the blocked senders that sends you emails when you go to your profile at the top of the settings app and you go to the icloud section right here have a section that says manage storage now going here you will be able to see stuff that is being downloaded to your iCloud Drive. So right here we'll find iCloud Drive and if you're using iCloud Drive for your downloads from Safari, then it will show you right here the downloads. If you go on downloads, you will see everything that you have actually downloaded from Safari and they're saved on your iCloud Drive taking up space there. Now of course, with a free plan, that space will go away really, really soon. So if you have an iPhone like 128 gigs, it's better, of course, for you to save those right here on your iPhone rather than saving them on iCloud Drive where you have just five gigs. Moving on to the maps setting. So if you go to maps, you will find lower here navigation and guidance. Now, when you go here, you can change the volume of the navigation voice. So you will have no voice if you just want to disable that low voice, normal, which is the default, or you can enable loud voice. So all that can be done from here. Anytime you need to change the sound of the navigation voice, then that will be able to be done directly from here. Next up, we're going to privacy and to location services. So this is the arrow that you get on the status bar when an app is using your location. But if you go lower here and go to system services, then you will have here a button that basically allows you to enable that arrow by default. This is turned off. It allows you to enable that arrow to show you when a system service is using your location, not apps, but system services as well. If you're someone that uses Zoom on your iPhone, then this one will be very, very useful. So we go here and enable the zoom feature we have it enabled and if we just zoom in here this will be actually very difficult if i want to type something you can see how it shows my keyboard i can type here but you can see the keyboard there very very hard of course to type and it's basically impossible but what you can do here is go ahead and enable smart typing now when enabling smart typing even though you might be zoomed in you go ahead and try to zoom some to actually type something you can see it will keep the small keyboard and it will show you right here this window which is zoomed in but again you will have here the small keyboard which makes it very very easy for you to type anything you want Moving on to the messages setting. So let's go here to messages. What you will find here is a section that says text message forwarding. Now, if you have another Apple device like a MacBook or an iPad, you can choose the messages to be forwarded to that device. So if you're using your MacBook and of course you don't have your iPhone nearby, you will have your iMessages forwarded 
to your Mac. That's really useful. Or maybe to your iPad. Very, very useful. And of course, very easy to enable them. But it's kind of hidden and probably might not have seen that at all. Next up, we're moving to Face ID and Passcode. If you go to Face ID and Passcode, you will have here all kinds of different features, but you will also find a section that says other apps. If you go here, then it will show you a list of apps that are actually using your Face ID. And from here, you will be able to actually enable or disable those apps from using Face ID. So really important, of course, Face ID. If you have any apps that have required to use your Face ID, then you can disable them from here. And last but not least, we're talking about predictive text, a feature I really, really like on the iPhone. But sometimes you might get an iPhone and probably you're writing all the time and you don't like some of the suggestions that you get. Of course, you can change that by going to general and just scroll all the way down here to reset and you have reset keyboard dictionary this will reset your predictive text you know that the iphone basically learns how you type and then it will show you the text but if you want to reset it you can do that directly from here so that is it for this video guys these are 15 iphone settings that i believe every iphone user should know about Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and I will see you on the next one.